All right, then, if you have your Bibles, we ask to turn to Psalms 121, the 121st Psalm, and we're going to begin reading in the first verse. This psalm is not accredited to any writer, just a song of degrees, and I'm sure that's something musical that I don't know about. Uh, Psalms 121, in the first verse, the Bible says, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither, shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper, and the Lord is thy shade upon the right hand. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you and we praise you for your word. Lord, we thank you that it's a living word and that it speaks to our hearts. Lord, we pray tonight that you'd send the Holy Ghost this way and that you would mingle it with your word and take it home to our hearts, Lord, and convict us and to make us to know you in a brighter way. And we'd be faithful to give you the praise for it. Lord, it's in God's name we do pray. Amen. Yeah. Now, uh, I love the first verse of this, and it'll be most of the focus of what we'll be preaching tonight. He said, I will lift up my eyes into the hills from which cometh my help. Yeah. Now, uh, we're going to look at a different a number of different places throughout the Bible where the Lord God helped his people in different ways, helped individuals, helped groups. And you know, every day, uh, we don't always look for it, but every day God helps us in some way. And it needs to be our responsibility to look for it. And so the psalmist, whether it was David or another, said that his help came from the Lord. The hills, the things that are above. And he being in control of all that majesty, anytime you receive any kind of help, it comes from God. Anytime you see you receive any benefit, it comes from God. The food on your table this evening before you arrived here, it came from God. You say, well, I got it at McDonald's or, or my wife fixed it or whatever you want to say, but know this, that it came from God. I believe it. Amen. And so whatever you have, it came from Him. And every day pre presents unusual circumstances. And every day God moves in a unique way. You know, uh, it is it is the, the amazing fact of God that He can use anything and everything He wants to. We talked on Sunday, I guess it was, uh, uh, about Balaam's ass and the message that she preached. That ought to show us that he can use anything he wants to. And you know what? When the message was done, the Bible says this, that Balaam's eyes was open and he saw the angel. So there was two things at work. The first, the angel, but Balaam couldn't see that. And so then the donkey took over and she was used of God. And two amazing things right there in front of Balaam. Mm -hmm. Now remember, Balaam didn't see the angel. And many times that's the problem. We don't look and we don't grab the image as it should be. And so we find that as the writer here says, he's looking where the help comes from. And that needs to be us every day when something glorious happens. And that's sometimes just getting out of bed and going for another day. When something glorious happens, give, give him the credit where credit is due. So he says, I'm going to look up and see the, where my help cometh from. Verse 2, my help cometh from the Lord. Now, any time, now he's going to use different modes and, and, and different ways to bring it your way, but your help, your benefit, your resource is always the Lord. Don't depend on yourself for one thing. Depend on the provider of all things. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. Now, you know what? Uh, that seems simplistic with what he says. But, you know, uh, where does rain come from? It comes from the first heaven, don't it? 
And so if they're in the first heaven, the atmosphere that uh, just that we can see every day, have you ever thought if that didn't work the way it did, we would have no vegetables to grow. And very soon your livestock would die mm -hmm. and there would be no food. Right. And, and so we, when, we, when the writer says in heaven, he meant exactly what he said and recognized the benefit that even just on a daily basis comes our way. Verse 3, he will not suffer thy foot to be moved. Now, what a wonderful, wonderful thing. Now, sometimes he will move you to a different place, but he ain't going to suffer you to be knocked out of the way. You know, every time, uh, you know, when Israel was described as backsliding Israel, that was their own fault. It wasn't God's fault. And so when we backslide, uh, it's our fault. But we're, we're, we don't ever say you don't have the strength to hang on. Because what you're doing really is saying God's not strong enough. Uh, because he's not going to he's not going to uh, allow us to be moved. He's not going to uh, leave us alone. Verse 4, Behold, he that, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. You know, you talk about a verse concerning the security of a believer. Listen, he don't slumber, he don't sleep. When I'm asleep, he's got it all taken care of. I don't have to think about breathing while I'm asleep. I don't have to wonder about my heart beating. He takes care of it. Uh, even to the point of your safety. Mm -hmm. That's where your health comes from. Mm -hmm. That's where every blessing that you can imagine comes your way, it comes from the Almighty, and it is amazing to see what He does. Verse 5, the Lord is thy keeper. You know, uh, when people say, well, I've lost my salvation, they're doubting this verse. The Lord is my keeper. Mm -hmm. Can I keep it? Certainly not. Uh, I'd be in a mess within the first five minutes. But, but the writer here, understanding that glorious truth, he says, The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon the right hand. Everything that happens is because of God. Now, do you remember when Jonah was preaching his message to Nineveh? And Nineveh began to repent. He was outside the city, and, and he was, at, and he, and the Lord God shot up a, uh, a tree, uh, a, a branch, uh, a vine that would shade him. And then it dried up, didn't it? Yeah. See, wherever, whatever position you're in, God's going to give you something. Um, we need to understand and know and begin to look for the great blessings that, that comes in service to the Almighty. Now, if you will go with me to Exodus chapter 17, uh, very familiar verses of Scripture. Exodus 17. Uh, and we're going to start reading in the first verse. Now, you know the story as well as I do. Uh, they had been delivered from Israel, I mean from Egypt, and uh, they went out into the wilderness. Now, one place describes this this desert place as the wilderness of sin. You know, every one of us has been in that place, have we not? Now remember, now I personally don't think that million people, four million people that came out, I think there were two saved individuals out of the whole pile. I think it was Moses and, and Joshua, and I think that's the only two that were true believers. Uh, uh, you know what, I've even, I've even thought many times Maybe Noah was the only saved one on the ark. They were all delivered, mm -hmm. but you don't see those other ones uh, ever serving the Lord, do you? Mm -hmm. But so we find this huge people, and they go out into the wilderness of sin, which is the nature of man. That's the direction we would go to. It's what we enjoy. It's what we like. And they get out there, and you know what? The wilderness of sin is empty. And it is even yet today, is it not? Why is it so attractive for us when there's literally nothing out there? But it is. And they get out there, and it's dusty and dry, 
The cows were starting to thirst to death. And, and, and the people began to moan and grab and said, Would to God we would stay by the flesh pots of Egypt. You know what? The, another thing that this shows us, you know, not every day is going to be health and wealth as a believer in Christ. Sometimes, you know what? You have to look for the blessing. Um, you know, uh, years ago, and, and God's always been good to us, but, and, and Adam and Sarah probably remembers too, every payday, which was only every other week back then, we'd get, a, we'd get one pizza and the whole family would, and that was our thing on Friday night. And, you know, uh, it wasn't much, but it was something we looked forward to. Right. And you know what? What I found now, and it'd be a waste of money, but we probably could have a pizza every night if we wanted it. Mm -hmm. But I know we wouldn't appreciate it like we did then. Yeah. Uh, and so we find then sometimes looking for the blessing, looking for the benefit, looking for what God has done is our problem. So they're all mad at Moses. And we'll begin reading in uh, 17 in the first verse. And all the congregation of the children of Israel journeyed from the wilderness of sin after their journeys according to the commandment of the Lord. And they pitched in Rephidim, and there was no water for the people to drink. Wherefore, the people did chide with Moses and said, Give us water that we may drink. And Moses said unto them, Why chide you with me? Wherefore doeth ye tempt the Lord? Now, uh, I want you to say, see this. When you miss a blessing, and again, if you're breathing, you got one. When you miss a blessing, what you're really doing is chiding with the Almighty. Uh, he's never done anything wrong. Can you imagine that? You look at the mistakes that we make in our life and imagine a being that's never done anything wrong. That's hard for me to get a hold of. So whatever's occurring in your life, uh, it's certainly the will of the of Almighty. So when Moses asked this, why are you chiding with me? The answer is this, is that they were sinful. They, they, were, they were ungodly people. They did not appreciate the goodness of God in any way. Verse, uh, verse 3. And the people thirsted there for water. And the people murmured against Moses and said, Wherefore is it that thou hast brought us up out of Egypt to kill us and our children and our cattle with thirst? And Moses cried unto the Lord, saying, What shall I do unto this people? They be almost ready to stone me. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go on before the people, and take with thee of the elders of Israel, and thy rod, where thou smotest the river, take it in thine hand, and go. Behold, I will stand before thee upon the rock in Horeb, and thou shalt smite the rock, and there shall come water out of it, that the people may drink. And Moses did so in the sight of the elders. Now, you know, uh, that's an unbelievable miracle, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Now, uh, all over Stewart County, and you know, in Stewart County, we don't really appreciate water like a lot of people do. Anywhere you look, there's a creek, a spring, or a river in Stewart County. But can you imagine, and uh, I, I, one of these huge limestone bluffs, just somebody dusty and dry and somebody going by and hitting it and water coming out. That's the God we serve. There's been no change in Him. That's the, that's the very God of the Bible, provision after provision. Wouldn't you love to see water just coming out of a dry rock somewhere? Wouldn't it be a wonderful thing? And you know, we've about convinced ourselves to the point that God doesn't work that way anymore. Most certainly He does. If He wants water to come out of a rock, you know what's going to happen? Water's going to come out of the rock. And it, and it always goes that way. Uh, Y'all know when we go down to Erin and pass out tracks every year, when you're going by the grocery there, the Piggly Wiggly, on the left there's a lake behind that Piggly Wiggly. Now, that's where the limestone mines were 
back in, well, they opened them in the 1870s and they went through the 1840s, but this is why they uh, ended. I mean, 1870s to the 1940s. And all the geological study says there's no water down there. Y'all can dig and dig and dig and keep digging. Well, and I talked to old men that were there. They were in the bottom of that pit and they were digging, digging, digging. And just guess what shot up? And now there's a lake there. They got out so quickly, there's, <laughs> there's still wheelbarrows and, and uh, railroad tracks at the bottom of that thing. See, God does whatever he wants. Don't, don't ever tempt the face of the Almighty mm -hmm. because he does what seems good in himself. Where there was no water, now there's a lake. That's the God that we serve. And so we find this amazing event happens, but I will remind you, and it's not our purpose tonight, that it wasn't very long at all that they forgot the goodness of God. And it was a very short time when they made Moses a smad, he struck the rock again. And he was supposed to just speak to it. You remember that? And uh, you look back through the years and see how good God's been to you. Uh, whether it's health or money or just the peace of God. What a wonderful, wonderful God that we serve that can literally bring life out of nothing. <laughs> he even brought sprouts out of Abram's rod. They budded out at a living out of a non-living. That's that's the God that we serve. Uh, Second Kings. Second Kings, chapter thirteen. Second Kings thirteen. I'm just gonna read two verses there. Uh, for time, 2 Kings 13 and verse 20, the Bible says this, and Elisha died. Now, if, uh, if you know the story of Elijah and Elisha, uh, when it was about time for Elijah to depart, he was called up by whirlwind and went to glory, that Elisha asked this, and uh, Elijah said, what wouldst thou have me to do before I depart? And he said, give me a double portion. And he says, thou hast asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if you see me go up, it shall be that way. Mm -hmm. And so through the life of Elijah, he had raised one from the dead. And then during Elisha's ministry, he raised one from the dead. But to fulfill his promise, we see this happen. To fulfill the Almighty's promise. Now, I don't know how many of y'all have ever seen a true skeleton, but I have. Um, uh, when I was in nursing school, the human anatomy course, uh, uh, Miss Barry called him Wilbur, and that was the skeleton, and it was the real deal. It wasn't plastic. It, it, was, it had been somebody at one time. Uh, I don't know if his name was Wilbur, but that, that's what she called him. And you know what? There was no life in that thing. We would go and put it on her desk sometime uh, just, to, just to cause her a little trouble. And you know what? It didn't go up and go to the desk itself. We had to move it. Now we have Elisha's body rotted for a year. If you'll follow the the time steps on this, he'd been down there a year by the time this occurs. Now, uh, bodies deteriorate very rapidly, and, and so I am sure there was nothing left but his skeleton and maybe a little hair or something like that, and that was it. So, in verse uh, 20, the Bible says this, and Elisha died, and you will too, uh, just remember that death is something that is cursed to each of us. And Elisha died, and they buried him. And the band of the Moabites invaded the land at the coming of uh, at the coming in of the year. And it came to pass, as they were burying a man, that behold, they spied a band of man uh, of men 
and they cast the man into the sepulcher of Elisha. Now, what, why they did this, and they, they were in the process of burying, doing a regular burial, and the enemy came in hand. Now, uh, listen, dear friend, uh, time and time again, when you fail to see the blessings of the Almighty, the enemy is at hand. And the Moabites were coming in, and they were going to kill some people, and they said, ah, well, we'll throw him in here with Elisha and make it a quick thing. And immediately when they threw him in there, he jumped up and looked around. See, isn't that unbelievable? Now, I think about the old skeleton guy at UT Martin. And it had no power, did it? It, it? it was just an empty thing that we learned about where the femur was at and had no ability of its own. But see, God gave it the ability. Can you imagine the God that we serve bringing life even out of this old oak pew? That's the God we serve. And so he touches it and immediately the dead man rises up and, and is praiseworthy unto God again. That's the God we serve. So don't tell me that he's no longer able. Don't tell me things are different in 2021 and they were than in the years before the Lord Jesus Christ. Our God has not changed. He's still the very same God, and he's very much in the miracle business. That's, that's what he does best. Look for them every day that you live. Gospel of John, again, very familiar verses of Scripture. Chapter 11. John chapter 11. We'll begin in the first verse. The story of Lazarus and his sisters. John 11 in the first verse. Now, a certain man was sick. Now, here lately... Uh, there's been a lot of sickness in New Testament Baptist Church. Uh, you know what that is for under the glory of God? Yeah. Uh, I don't understand all of it, but I do know this. I was sick with COVID, and I stand before you tonight. Yeah. That's the goodness of God. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Uh, he is so good to us. And whatever the circumstances may be, he's in the midst. He's in the middle of that. Mm -hmm. He's in the midst of every problem. He's in the midst of every victory. He's in the middle of a routine day. Now, when, when the times are bad, we kind of can praise him a little bit if we, if we look with the spiritual eye. And when the times are good, we can praise him some of the goodness of God. But what about a routine, everyday day, driving to the nursing home? That's when we can, there's still something good going on. You know what? This morning I got out there and I got in my truck without any help from anybody. That's good. Yeah. See, we often praise Him on the really bad days and we praise Him on the really good days, but on an ordinary day, do we praise Him like we should? I don't think so because we fail to see the miracle. Now, a certain man was sick named Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary, and her sister Martha. It was that Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment. That was the one that used her hair and, and, and cleaned his feet. And remember what old Judas said, this could have been sold and, and helped the poor. He was a very greedy man. And, and, and so it was those people that had an unusual love for Christ. You know, uh, when, when, when I'm gone out of here one day, it wouldn't be my God that, that, that they would say of me, he had an unusual love of Christ. You know what? I love the teaching of the Lord's church. I love the teaching uh, of, uh, of God being in the very sovereign, saving business, predestination. All of that is wonderful. But you know what I love more is the person of Christ. Mm -hmm. I think we're forgetting that, don't you? I just love the person of Christ. And, and so we find that these three knew Christ intimately. He was even criticized for eating with them at one time. Verse 3, 
Lazarus is sick. What happens next? Therefore his sister sent unto him, meaning Christ, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. And, Jesus, and when Jesus heard that, he said, this sickness is not unto death, but to the glory of God. Uh, you know, it was very, very hard for them to ever see that for, for at least five days, right? Mm -hmm. four, day, four days before he even left where he was at to go where they were at. And then he had travel time in between. And when he got there, were they praising the Lord? See, remember what Martha said, Lord, if thou wouldest have been here, he would not have died. And then the famous words, Lazarus, come forth. You know what? That is just as true today as it was when it occurred. Right now, if it was under the hand, if it was in the will of the Almighty, anybody you can think of in Stewart County that's buried, he can say, come forth. And there, the, the, you know what? There would be no, no stopping them if you wanted to. See, that's the, that's the thing about God's sovereignty is when He speaks, it's going to happen. When you think about the, the end time prophecy, you know, you know why I get so much encouragement about that? Because He spoke it, therefore it must transpire. That's the God we serve. And you know what? When they came over there, uh, when they came through there, the Bible says that He came bound hand and foot out of the grave. And he, they said, loose Him and set Him free. And I don't know how many more years he served him, but he served him. See, it all started with an illness, didn't it? It started with what mankind would say was a delay. It started with watching somebody die. It started with watching somebody be buried. And all unto the glory of God. So in the which, if I understand it, everybody says four days. It said he'd been dead four days. Mm -hmm. So I think it actually took six. In those six days, I wonder what Mary and Martha thought. I think they felt left out, don't you? They probably felt forgotten. They were probably upset. And in immediate they they experienced one of the greatest blessings the Bible speaks of. And it, it just that quick. See, it's the very same Lord that we serve today. Wonder what he'll use today. Will he use death? Will he use storms? Will he just give you a cleansing breath? You know, uh, we, we look for deep things, don't we? But what, what, did, what did the Lord Jesus say? With food and raiment, that means food and clothing, be with their content. You know, I, I dare say our biggest in, enemy in serving Christ is discontentment. You know, uh, all the way back to the years following the Second World War, when we were taught to compare ourselves to everybody else. You know, there was a time when that didn't even mean anything. And I, don't really, I really don't believe it was just because everybody was poor, because they weren't. You just knew that they had been blessed that way, and you had been blessed this way, and you weren't worried about it. But something after World War II, we started comparing ourselves to others. And we had to have what everybody else had. If it meant complete compromise of the home, which it did, look what we have today. I'm going to have what I'm going to have. And that, 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 that is the nature of man. And so get away from all that and begin looking for the miracle on a daily basis. You look at his blessings. You see how he works. You know, uh, would to God that we would see him work in the smallest sparrow flying by. Mm -hmm. What an amazing creature. 
to see a bird just uh, go by. What an, what an amazing thing. And yet still we, ne we never consider it. We, we take it as routine. You ever wonder the reason that we don't see more miracles is because we don't appreciate the ones we see every day? I wonder that often have to say probably it's so. Now, last, last place we're going to read uh, this evening, the Gospel of Matthew chapter 14. Matthew 14, and we're going to begin reading in verse 22. Matthew uh, 14, beginning in verse 22. The Bible says, in straightway, Jesus constrained or required or made them. Has Christ ever made you do something? If you say no, then you don't really believe the sovereignty of God. Now, you may not have seen it at the time, but I'll guarantee you he's made you go some places because of his goodness. And, the, and straightway Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship and go before him unto the other side while he sent the multitudes away. Now, just what he had done just before this, and I know each of you know, he had uh, blessed the food that the boy had brought, five loaves and two fishes, and fed 5,000 men, the side women and children, and then they took up 12 baskets full, one for each apostle. And, and with that miracle just happening, uh, can you imagine that? You, you, have you ever read that carefully? If, if I understand it right, the Lord Jesus kept just breaking it and blessing it and breaking it and blessing it. And, and the apostles were taking it up by platefuls and running it to people. And he kept just breaking it and blessing it and breaking it. And, you know, that had to be unbelievable to see. You know, I'll, I'll have to, I'll have to say, say, with uh, shamefacedness, I've never seen anything like that. Now, I, I've seen a few times when we were running low on food and it lasted a payday, and I attributed that to the Almighty. But have you ever fed a hundred people with one meal that would feed your family? No, we haven't, and I believe a lot of it is our lack of faith. Uh, our our uh, idea that that is all done with, with the, when, when the written Bible ended. And so they had just beheld this great unbelieving miracle and they got some direction from God. You know, every direction you get from God is a blessing. Now that's both the direction out of this book and it's direction that He gives you individually. When you're in prayer and he says, I want you to go to this house when you're in prayer and he, uh, he says, I want you to hold your horses. That's all very, very much a blessing of God. It, it, it is a miracle that it happens. And so he sent the multitudes away. He gave them direction to where to go. And verse 23, and when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up a mountain park to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. But the ship was tossed in the midst of the sea. Now they were required, constrained to do this. And now where have they wound up? Now, uh, I've heard way too much and know that it's not true. If you'll just be obedient, everything will be fine. Well, that's not how it's worked out in my life. Yeah. Now, I've seen God in it, but I guarantee you this. It, was, uh, it, it wasn't pew walking stuff sometimes. Be obedient. They were obedient, and they ended up in the midst of a storm. That's a, that's a horror. You know what? And, and every one of you know I'm right. If we'd done the same thing, we would, we'd have been really upset, wouldn't we? Now, I did what he said to do, and now look at the mess I'm in. And so the Lord Jesus came by walking on the sea. What a wonderful, wonderful, glorious thing. No effort whatsoever. Just step after step after step. 
with no consciousness of trying because he's God. And I think it's Luke Gospel says, and would have passed him by. And Peter said, it's a spirit. And uh, the very text we're reading there in Matthew says, be of good cheer. It is I, be not afraid. You know, cheerfulness is, is something that comes from God. Mm -hmm. Being happy in the most difficult circumstance comes from God. Getting bad news and, and saying it is well, that comes from God. Mm -hmm. And then, old Peter says, Lord, if it be thou, bid thee come unto me. He said, come. And he did all right for a minute, didn't he? He got his, he got his eyes off of Jesus. But while we, we pick up on that piece of it, did you ever wonder and think, what an amazing thing, if it was just for two seconds, he was standing on water. <coughs> That's an amazing... You know what? There's no reason that that can't happen for us except for unbelief. That, that, that is the only thing. And, and so we find what an incredible miracle it was, and then the, the biggest one of all he said, peace, be still. And that even the elements were obedient to the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the God we serve. You know, uh, if you, uh, I guess it was maybe last year about this time, I can't remember for sure. There was a tornado that come through. It may not have been that. And uh, Sister Diane called us because we're the weirdos that don't have a TV. And said, there's a tornado and it says to back a port. And you know what? When you're in a double wide on top of a steep hill, there ain't a whole lot of places to go. <laughs> and said the storm system did like this. Went down out on the uh, turn there by the free will church and bought the smells. Man, it tore up Jack. <coughs> and then it eat Indian mound up too. Just kind of did like that. You know what? That's the goodness of God. But you know, a lot of people would just say, well, that's just how the system, the weather system went. No, no. God wanted to spare our home. And more so than sparing that little double wide on the side of the hill, he wanted to manifest himself as God. Just as the Bible tells us that he is. He wanted me and Donna and the girls to see hey, I'm still on the throne. Mm -hmm. At the most extreme time, remember this, he doeth all things well. Well is good and beneficial and right. Yeah. And that's what we need to remember in the most difficult of days <laughs> is that he's doing, how will he work in your life today? I don't know. How will he work in your life tomorrow? I don't know, but I will say this. Look. Look. And you'll see him. He's in the midst. 